a little colder in Eugene today. So in this video, I think I'm going to reflect on the Simplot games, reflect on my first time coaching, and then I have a pretty cool announcement to shoot to you guys. I think it's going to be pretty nice, and I think you guys are really, really going to enjoy it. So stick around to the end of the video so you guys can find out my announcement. Plus, there might be a little giveaway. So first off, you guys can't overreact when I don't post for a week. I know I said I was going to post every other day, and I know you guys asked a bunch of questions, and I will get to those questions within a reasonable amount of time, but you guys can't overreact. Secondly, I wanted to talk about my first experience at the Simplot Games. That is a crazy venue. There's 20, I want to say that there was 2,700 athletes there, not 27,000, 2,700 athletes there, and it was unreal. I loved how they did everything. I thought that it was super cool how it was just like bare bones competition. If you make the qualifying mark, you make it. If you don't, we're not going to measure it. We don't care whether you jumped as long as you qualify for finals. We'll measure everything in the finals, but I thought that was super cool. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you haven't been there before, Literally for the long jump, there was 137 athletes, and they ran it just like a middle school meet to where, like, you got on the runway, you ran down, they recorded your bid number after you had jumped, and they said that this is either you qualified or you didn't qualify. And they had two marks on each side of the pit. They would pull a string across, and if your mark was further than those two marks, you qualified. If it was less than that, you didn't qualify. My athlete qualified on his first jump, and I made sure that he was in the top five jumpers. So, like, he was the first five to jump. After he qualified, he took one jump, we were done. We went, got food, came back to the venue, and they were still jumping. There were still people on the runway trying to qualify. It was like a two and a half hour long jump competition, and they weren't even measuring things. It was insane. They ran it super efficient for the number of kids that they had. Kudos to you guys. It was an awesome atmosphere, it was an awesome event. Simplot Games, definitely worth checking it out. And so as you guys know, I've been doing some private coaching lately. And so the reason I was at Simplot Games, not because I was competing, but because I was coaching one of my athletes and he was entered in the long jump, the high jump, and the 60. He qualified in the long jump and in the high jump. Um, so great job. That was awesome. It was his first indoor meet ever, so it was just a learning experience all around. Um, I didn't really expect him to qualify in the 60 because, I mean, there's some fast kids there and I think they only took top 12 out of 160 or something like that. Crazy numbers. He did really well. My first coaching experience. So I've coached before. I've coached like middle school athletes at like a large scale. So not individually coaching one athlete, but like walking around at different events, giving out little pointers, that kind of thing. But never like following around one athlete, making sure that they're warmed up, making sure that they're doing the thing that they're supposed to be doing at that time, making sure that everything is going according to plan for them. And I think that it was a great learning experience for me. One, because it was a huge meet. Uh, there was a bunch going on, like, there was a ton of stuff going on around me. And there was a ton of stuff going around around my athlete. And I had to keep both of us kind of in the game. So kudos to all the coaches that have been doing it for a long time. And if you're an athlete, don't be too hot on your coach. Because it, it was actually relatively stressful. So my first coaching experience was awesome. Uh... He was very responsive, like my athlete was very responsive. He was able to listen and kind of adjust to the things that I wanted him to do. Um, he was a little bit over, like he was a, a, quite a bit behind the board on his first long jump. We talked about some things, he adjusted. He was on on the next one. Um, next one he was a little bit over. We adjusted it uh, and then he was on the rest of the competition. So that was awesome. Um, six out of seven jumps were fair jumps, which is kind of, I mean, phenomenal being that he's going to be a decathlete next year. Uh, it's, it's just perfect because you, you need to be consistently on the board all the time. So that was a good coaching experience for both of us. We both got, it was like the first competition experience for both of us to like narrow down our communication between each other. Um, high jump was considerably harder because you're further away from your athlete while they're competing. You're not face to face. You're kind of like it's more hand signals and like, okay, I want you to move back four inches or I want you to um, turn it over into the curve. You have to talk a lot more with your hands so that they can understand you because you're, you're yelling to the middle of the track. It's, it's a lot different. And that was kind of, it was challenging to, one, find a way to motivate them because you're not, you're not directly in front of them to kind of talk to them. Um, anyways, I'm going to cut that short because I could go on and on about coaching and talking about that. I think it's really interesting. It's really cool. Another thing I wanted to update you guys on is that I think I might have found a job um, doing something that I actually want to do. Uh, personal training. Uh, if you guys don't know, I've been studying to pass my certification. Hopefully I'll pass that sometime 
the beginning of March, as in it's coming up pretty soon, I'll be officially a certified personal trainer. But I'll be working at a local gym here in Eugene, and I'll keep you guys updated as to how that's going along. But I had an interview today, it went pretty well. Hopefully that, hopefully they'll, uh, they'll assign me. Um, I think it'll be pretty cool. The other update, I've been working on something for you guys. And when I say for you guys, I mean for both of us. I've had a lot of comments on people that want to support me, that want to help out, um, whether like they want to donate or they want to send me some stuff. And I never felt like super comfortable comfortable with just having people donate. Like obviously this is something I just do for you guys. Like I enjoy doing it. Yeah, I could make some money off it, and yeah, I do like make a little bit off of just YouTube because that's that's what YouTube is. It's a entity. Any anyways, it's just you guys don't need to know that part about it. You guys just need to know what I've been working on. And I think it's pretty cool what I have been working on. Um, I'll show you guys right now. So if you guys take a look at this website, um, it's something I've been working on for a little bit. I wanted a way that you guys could support me, but not just like donate, like I said. I'd rather have you guys get something out of it outside these videos. So I chose to pursue two things. One, my photography, and two, um, you guys helping me produce these videos. So my, my idea was that you guys could purchase these prints, these photos. These are all stuff that I've taken. It's all my artwork. It's all stuff that I'm, I'm really proud of, and that's why I put it on this website. Um, and you guys would purchase them. I would write like a nice note to you guys or like a thank you note basically on the back of it um, and send it out to you. So, but it's like, it's something that I think is good enough that you could easily hang in your house. I, I'm, I'm pretty proud of it. Um, but I think that it's a way that you guys can support me and I can also give you something back that's a little more personal than just like, oh, thank you for the donation. Like this, this is actually something that is a physical entity of your support for me. I, I think that that's the best way for me to do it and I think that it's kinda cool. I've always wanted to try and sell my photography and see if it was something that I could actually do and if it is I really hope it works out. Um, there are a couple varying price ranges. Uh, the Lighthouse and a couple other photos I'm gonna add later are a little more expensive because I think they're some of my better work and then the Panorama of Seattle, it's a, it's a really big photo. It's actually like a meter wide and so it costs, it's like this wide and so I actually have I actually have a print of this one let me show you so it's that big that's a queen size bed and that's the size of the photo it's a, dang that was loud that's a pretty cool photo I think anyways um, the thought behind it is that it's a little bit bigger photo, so it costs a little more to print, and that's why it costs a little bit more. But if you like Seattle, I really recommend it. It's a sick photo. Um, that's that's kind of what I'm hoping everything works out, and currently you can't purchase anything on there, but if you do subscribe to the like mailing list on the website, then once I do have it up and running to where you can buy stuff, which should be by the end of this week, um, you guys can... You guys will get an email saying that the site is now up and available or something like that. Uh, I think that was pretty much the only updates that I had for you guys. I just wanted to, like, when I don't post for a while, you guys kind of freak out. Um, so I just wanted to get a quick video out of what I've been working on so you guys understand that I'm not just neglecting you guys. I am planning and trying to do some stuff that you guys will benefit both of us and that I was gone for like a week coaching. Um, other than that, what else? What else we got going on? Uh, I think that might be just about it. Not a super interesting video, sorry guys. And sorry I didn't answer any questions. Um, my favorite food to eat, uh, that's been, that was a question last week. My favorite food, hands down, burritos. I love burritos. Uh, and I think that's where we're going to end. So remember, be nice to people. Don't hurt yourself. Don't hurt others. Slow down. Don't dance so fast. Go check out the website. Obviously, it's not up yet, but um, I'd love to get your feedback on the prints that are up there. I'm going to add some more uh, probably later this week, so keep checking in. If there's not one that you like, then wait until I take some more photos, I guess. Anyways, I'll talk to you guys all later this week. Okay, bye.
I totally forgot about the giveaway. I want to give away one of those prints. I want to show you guys that they're actually pretty cool prints. So I would like you guys to enter to win the giveaway by liking this video, commenting on this video, where you would hang it, and which one you would like, and sharing this video. Um, those are the ways to enter the giveaway. Uh, ready, set, go. The other thing is, everyone that I met at Simplot, please um, either direct message me on Instagram or Twitter and uh, send me a photo of, if we didn't get to take a photo, but you did introduce yourself, then please just send me the photo of you competing at the Simplot Games. And then if we did get to take a photo, please send me the photo of uh, the photo that we took. That would be awesome. I'd love to get you guys in a video. I love my fans. You guys are awesome. It was really cool to meet you guys, and congratulations on all your guys' successes. Uh, that's going to be the actual end of the video. Enjoy this fire.